conflict, and I think the other was a noticing conflict. And those two applications are Bridgehampton Commons and Domena Horse Farm. As I say, they will be opened. If you're here to speak on those applications, you're welcome to speak. Your, your testimony will be entered into the record, but then they will be adjourned. So if you don't want to speak this evening, you can come back uh, to the adjournment date. There's no presentation on the application. Uh, once the application is called, we'll ask the representative to present <clears throat> to a brief presentation at the podium. I'll open the floor to questions and comments from members of the board. Following that, we will open the floor to members' uh, qu comments from the public. One thing we do ask, if you wish to enter testimony, please use the podium. We can all hear you in your seats, but it's important for our sensitive recording equipment that you do use the podium. Uh, please state your name. Uh, for the public record and any affiliation you have, if you're an adjoining neighbor, if you're uh, representing a civic group, uh, just state any affiliation you may have. Also, print your name at some point on the sign-in sheet um, that is provided. <clears throat> also, in the event of an emergency, exit this room utilizing either of the two rear doors, go to the main floor using either staircase, and exit this building using the front or the side rear door. Um, we're going in order then. We're going to go Quark St. Clair uh, Fuel. Do we have notice of posting? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. You offer reading or no? Okay. Good. <coughs> Good. Read the notice into the record. A notice of public hearing. Please take notice that in accordance with the town code of the town of Southampton, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton <clears throat> Town Planning Board on Thursday, November 8th, 2018 at 6, uh, 6 p.m. Prevailing time at the Southampton Town Hall at 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, New York, to consider the special exception application entitled Quag Sinclair Fuel Hampton Bays. The application is is for the installation of an additional 42,200 gallon underground tank <coughs> propane storage on an, on an existing 65,229 square foot parcel improved with the, an office and a fuel tanks located on the highway business, HB, excuse me, located in highway business zoning district, 164 West Montauk Highway, Hampton Bays. Suffolk County tax map, tax map number 900-2221-13 by order of the Planning Board of the Town of Southampton, Philip Keith, Secretary. Great, thank you, welcome. Good, good evening, uh, my name is Russell Rose. I am the CEO of Quag Sinclair Fuel, and as stated, I am here to request the uh, permission to put in a second underground uh, propane storage facility. Uh, the uh, facility, uh, we had uh, received first permission back in 2015, and we put in the first 422 uh, storage tank, and as the propane industry on eastern Suffolk has, has greatly expanded, we've come to the position that we need additional storage. Our original plan was we were looking for a one week to two weeks worth of storage uh, in case snowstorms and we couldn't get the product in that we needed that much. With the growth of our business, it's now we need about two weeks. Uh, after last January, when we had that horrible starting of the season, we had uh, were in a position where our transports that bring it from down from Selkirk, New York, and Linden, Jersey, they were getting tied up, and we were starting to get very close to running out of product, which would have meant that homes would have run out of the ability to heat their homes. So that's why we're uh, requesting the ability to put in a second tank. Uh, as noted, it's an underground tank. Uh, and accordingly, after it's installed, you will never know that there was a change in the property. Uh, this ties into the first one, which on the plans you'll see they're very close. It will be about six feet apart from it. 
these go down um, they're about 16 feet to the bottom of the tank and they leave probably six to eight feet of earth on top of the tank it will connect to the front tank so there will be no additional pipes or piping coming out of the ground. It will connect to it. They become, in essence, a lo one large tank, and they feed uh, through the existing <coughs> pump-out station. So uh, as soon as it's buried, no one would ever know that there was an additional tank installed. Okay, very good. Questions for the uh, applicant? I presume there are safety standards that you are following that will be checked by the authority? Yes. What we do, just to give you a, a follow-up on from the last meeting, the last time we were here, we ha are required by NFPS uh, 58, that's the governing body for propane, we're required to do f a formal monthly inspection of our facility and once a year we bring in an outside consultant who's required to come in and do a full review. I have all those reports on file. Um, if they find anything, we have 30 days to fix it. Uh, and all of our reports are showing clean and good inspection. And we do an informal daily inspection before any tanks are turned on. Uh, so we're very cognizant of the safety requirements that are required when you're handling uh, handling propane. Are, are the tanks double hulled? Or, I'm sorry. Are the tanks double hulled? Uh, yes, they're well. They're alu they're uh, aluminum tanks. They're about a little over three eighths of an inch to a half inch thick. So it's not a double skin. It's a single. And being buried, that gives you the uh, originally when we applied. Uh, in, in 2015, we were talking about above ground. The uh, board, planning board had expressed some concerns, and that's why we moved to bur burying the tanks, because the, the, the safety history is, is so, uh, a little certainly better with being buried. There's no uh, chance of rupture. There's no leaking of the tank, and it has turned out to be the preferred way and uh, as I said the strength of those tanks are um, exceptionally high. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Rowe. That's it. That's okay. it. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on Qual mm -hmm. Sinclair fuel? Give no public comment and entertain a motion to close with a uh, uh, 10 day written comment period. Motion by Blaney. Second. Second by Robin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? We have six. Thank six, you. Yes, one absent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, item two is uh, Harvey Sternberg. <coughs> Lorraine, are you up for reading? Sure. Okay. Uh, Lorraine's going to read. Yeah, I don't have anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do Make it. it if I, I can't do it if I don't have it. You don't have it memorized? <laughs> no, I do. I, no, because I thought I was number three. Ah. <laughs> Notice of public hearing. Please take notice that in accordance with the town code of the town of Southampton, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, November 8, 2018 at 6 p.m. prevailing time at the Southampton Town Hall at 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, New York to consider the pre-application entitled Harvey Sternberg. The pre-application provides a planned residential development cluster plan and standard plan, both proposing two lots on a 550,206 square foot parcel situated in CR 200 zoning district, situated within the Aquifer Protection Overlay District at 1245 Noyak Path, located within the hamlet of Bridgehampton, Suffolk County tax map number 900-36-1-4.2 by order of the Planning Board of the Town of Southampton, Philip Keith, Secretary. Welcome. Thank you. For the applicant, uh, Harvey Sternberg, David Gilmartin, Jr., Farrell Fritz, 50 Station Road, Water Mill, New York. And in front of you, you have a two, an application for a two-lot subdivision. Um, we have a standard plan and a cluster plan, and I think we're all in agreement that the cluster plan is the way we'd like to see uh, this go. It's the applicant's preferred plan. Um, and it results in eight and a half acres of open space, which is contiguous to other properties owned 
uh, by the town. It's off the Little Noyak Path, so we're gaining access through easements. Um, Mr. Sternberg has control of each of the properties that uh, are providing the easements. Uh, otherwise, the property would be landlocked. Uh, we do have an application in with the uh, town zoning board uh, because we have zero lot uh, road frontage. So that application is certainly is currently pending before the board. Um, again, there's eight and a half acres of open space here. Um, it's a pretty straightforward application. Um, I understand it's a public hearing, so we'll hear from the public. But if you have any questions, uh, we'll try and answer. What's the width of the easement? Um, the width of the easement, it, it, it varies. Um, it's 30 to 40 feet wide here, 20 feet wide here. Uh, we did talk to staff and we guaranteed that we'd have 18 feet um, actually improved in the width through the, uh, through the whole um, subdivision or access to the subdivision. What's the topography? It's, it's challenging. It's challenging. Um, this, this is the uh, county topo. We're in the process of uh, getting the, the live topos from uh, the Rainer group. We've discussed that with staff and understand that there could be some shifting of lots as we go through the process. But um, the, this, the, again. The lots that the uh, access is going across, what's there now? Is that just vacant land? Well, th this is an improved piece of property. Uh, this lot is currently vacant, and obviously that's vacant, the subject lot. Is there town water on Noyak? <laughs> no, that's a, a good question. I'm not sure if there's town water in this area, but there isn't. Uh, there isn't. There isn't. Yeah. Yeah. May come across that issue again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I would say is that the, the heart 90 degree turn on the Bryn Mawr and Sternberg is we're going to have to modify that. Um, okay. We'll take a look. Yeah. That's that's the unimproved par parcel where that is correct. Where Dennis is talking. Sorry. Well, the Britain Bar so, I think it leaves improved. This one has a house. The Sternberg is unimproved. Yeah. Yeah, we we can work on the work on the access. Okay. Okay. Further questions? Okay. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on the matter of Harvey Sternberg? Yes, please use the podium. My name is Pamela Harwood. Um, from Bridgehampton. Uh, I think this is a very generous um, set aside of open space for a 12 foot, uh, 12 uh, acre <laughs> parcel uh, with about um, eight acres of set aside, which is very generous and I think great if it's contiguous with other properties. Uh, perhaps is this part of the hiking trail, Jackie? Uh, is it? Okay. Um, the, I just want to voice one concern, and it really does not, uh, it's not about this project in particular, which sounds uh, very nice. But I want to draw one issue about these cluster development subdivisions uh, that set aside open space. Um, one was built down the street from me. It was before my time with the CAC. And um, what happens is when you see these site plans now, you're, you have no idea what size of a house will be built on these. So it sounds like, okay, two houses, 12 acre property, eight acre set aside, that sounds great. And that will protect the aquifer because we're on a aquifer protection overlay district here. But what happened in a property near to me, I may have even brought this up to you in the past, was that five houses that were on half an acre with only a one acre set aside turned out to be 7,000 square feet with seven bathrooms each. So there could be a lot of people living in each house, seven bathrooms, that's a lot of water flow, a lot of sewage. And so the one acre that was set aside, you know, if they were allowed to build a 7,000 square foot house, five of them with seven bathrooms, that's 35 bathrooms on what was a total of a five acre lot, you're not seeing this here. The planning board is not seeing that. So I wonder if there's any way in the future to know or establish at this level of approval whether or not the planning board can be made aware of the conditions that will exist in the houses that will be built, how many bathrooms, how many showers, toilets, 
And then we are also um, have to think about, here we are trying to protect the environment and protect our groundwater, but Southampton ha Town has no regulations about the use of synthetic pesticides, fertilizers, um, herbicides, and we're trying to protect the aquifer and the environment by doing these clustered subdivisions, but in the absence of any guidelines about the use of those chemicals, I see the two were not really working hand in hand. So I would like to urge the planning board to speak with the town board, if it can, I don't know how that works, to see if we can limit the size of houses on aquifer protection overlay districts and to see if we can limit synthetic chemicals that landscapers and homeowners use on these very, very sensitive areas. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard on Harvey Sternberg? Okay, hearing no public comment, I'll entertain the motion to close with the 10 day written comment period. Motion. Motion by Jackie. Second. Second by uh, Robin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? We have six yes. Jackie, are you up for reading? Jackie, are you up for reading? Yep. Okay, we're going to call JR Landscaping. Oh, JNR was adjourned. I'm sorry. We're going to call up uh, Jane Frith, item four on the agenda. Oh, no. oh, oh. JNR Landscaping. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Let's try again. JNR Landscaping. We don't have to read the notice. We don't have to read the notice. That's what Jane's trying to say. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. Making sure you were paying attention. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, because I was sleeping. As uh, I've been known to do during these meetings. <clears throat> uh, for the applicant, Robert Marcinsuk, O'Shea Marcinsuk and Bruin, 250 North Sea Road, Southampton. Um, this is an application to construct an approximate 10,800 square foot agricultural storage building to store landscape vehicles, machinery, and equipment using connection with a tree and shrub uh, nursery on the site. Um, the last public hearing on this matter, we provided an equipment list of all the applicants' equipment, um, which includes uh, six skid steers, 11 farm vehicles, 14 tractors, five trailers, and various other pieces of machinery, such as uh, wood chippers, um, mowers, tree spades, um, and various other tools. <coughs> uh, the property. Uh, I should say the proposed location of the building is in the uh, southwest corner of the property, which the uh, survey, which is not up here this evening, but which was submitted uh, in connection with this application will show uh, that it's a low spot um, on the property. There's uh, topography on the, uh, on the survey that had been uh, submitted previously, and uh, uh, you can see from the topography on there that uh, this is the low spot of the property. Um, it was uh, selected to be there because it's basically as far away and in a low spot away from the residentially uh, developed and some, un uh, some undeveloped uh, um, parcels that are located uh, to the east of the subject property. Um, there's some existing screening to obstruct the view uh, uh, of the proposed building. Um, at the last public hearing, um, a couple of neighbors who either reside or own property um, on those residentially uh, uh, developed parcels mm -hmm. to the east expressed some concerns over the size of the barn and the screening on the, uh, uh, of the proposed building. And we were asked to prepare a, uh, essentially a detailed landscape plan uh, to show the proposed screening, which is essentially what we've done here uh, this evening, which you should have in front of you. Um, we are proposing to plant uh, uh, 25 foot tall uh, pyrus chandeliers, transplant uh, 12 to 14 foot Leland cypresses in the open areas uh, along the property line. There's already existing uh, privet hedge, uh, birches, uh, crepe myrtles, and other naturally wooded areas uh, that exist along um, the property line as shown again on the, uh, on the landscape plan. Um, we further propose to plant some additional 25 foot tall Leland cypresses and uh, 25 foot tall sycamore trees just to the east of the proposed building here to further screen <coughs> the, uh, the proposed building from uh, 
community views as you look in the western opening, the western gate, so that uh, the, the building um, won't be visible. Uh, the, applic the applicant has already uh, transplanted various uh, Leland cypresses, which I would like to submit into the record photographs of uh, some of these, uh, well, of the Leland cypresses, which I'll <coughs> give in. Four photographs there. <clears throat> Basically, all of the Leland cypresses that are shown to be, you know, transplanted here, here, um, and along here have already been transplanted. They are there, and those are photographs to show that those uh, some are 12 to 14 feet. There's actually some that are up to 25 feet that have already been, uh, you know, transplanted there. Um, I guess that's basically all I got um, with respect to our landscape plan, and I'm available to answer any questions if uh, important. Is this part of their nursery stock, these plantings? Some are. So they're not going to be dug up later and moved away? No. Okay. Nope. Is there any proposed lighting? Uh, no. None at all? None. Okay. Don't you have to have lighting above doorways by close? Okay, uh, perhaps there is. If if that if there is a necessity, uh, we will include some lighting in our plan. It has, you know, it has to be dark sky compliant. Right, of course, it'll be uh, code compliant lighting above the doors. Can you just talk a little about the uh, entrance into this? You have a proposed gate. Um. Is that how are we getting in here? Well, there's two means, one from the, uh, here, both of which are 30-foot wide, I believe, um, entries. It's basically a metal gate with, uh, uh, it's very similar to deer fence in, in the sense that, uh, you know, the mesh. The ha-ha gates, yeah. On a mesh uh, wire type uh, mm -hmm. uh, on, on metal. So there are two entrances then? Correct. Further questions? I know this is our second hearing on this. Um, so many of us are familiar with the site. We'll open the floor to public comment on uh, JNR landscaping. Yes, please use the podium. They sound like a broken record here, but um, uh, it is on an agricultural reserve parcel. And I'm just wondering the neighbors know that they're. Um, have a house on such an agricultural reserve parcel and I wonder if the screening for the neighbors from the barn will um, will this hamper the sense of open space that the community feels about uh, farmland mm -hmm. but more important it's on an aquifer protection overlay district again and I wonder is does JNR um, use um, synthetic uh, fertilizers, herbicides, um, pesticides on this property. Um, uh, I wonder about that, and if they do, I wonder if you can ask them to limit themselves to organic uh, materials. We have, no, we have no control over farming operations. Okay. The state governs um, the right. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. so that's something to take up with the state. Hmm? Ags and market, right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. <coughs> comments on uh, on J and R landscaping. Yes. Sir. I'm uh, Dari Yates. We spoke to you beforehand. 
Um, to, before I go into what my main points are about this issue, the first thing I'd like to request is that I have not seen this before. This is the first I've seen this. Um, I would like the opportunity to study it, to walk the property, to get a feel for what this is going to look like. I have a very vested interest in the land that is adjacent to this. And having never seen this before, I would like to ask that it be continued so that we get a better chance to analyze the proposal. Where, 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 where do you live? Uh, I own the property that's right here at the curve of this road, and it goes out to the Long Pond. It's, it's, it's pond front property right beyond the road. We keep the record open for how long? We, use, we keep the written record open so you can uh, submit written comments. Well, what, does, what does that mean? In other words, it allows you to study the property and enter your comments into the record if you have concerns or um, they don't need to necessarily be audio, audible comments, uh -huh. okay. written comments. So, so when would the, what's day? the delay for day? that? When we, would we that would time? provide probably 30 days. A 30, 30 days. Day. So I, we could delay this 30 no, no, days? No, no, no. The record would remain open. So you would have 30 days from today to submit written comment on on this project. Mm -hmm. Well, I have several other things. Well, that, we'll that, that was my yeah. first yeah. Uh, request. Um, you know my father, Lee Smith. <clears throat> and he could not be here tonight. And he did write a brief letter. It's, uh, so I'd like to read it to you on behalf of him. Uh, he says, to whom it may concern, in 1984, my family created an ag reserve of approximately 20 acres on the Hayground Road in order to preserve the land for the enjoyment of future generations. Certainly, a warehouse that is 10,800 square feet is not what our ancestors had envisioned uh, when the reserve was created. It is also not needed to maintain a 20-acre nursery. It's much lo too large. It is my understanding that the proposed building will actually be 26 feet in height, according to the staff member at the planning board desk downstairs, rather than the 16.6 feet that was originally proposed on the uh, legal papers. Thank you for your time, Lee Smith. So my dad wanted to say those things. Okay, so what I would like to say is something like, um, let's say you want to buy land in the Hamptons and you want to, you've got the latest, <coughs> you want to buy a beautiful piece of property. You find a road that is much longer than this. It extends um, another, about a half mile. It's about 0.6 miles to the beginning of our land. So you drive down this beautiful long private driveway and there's beautiful nursery uh, plants here everything is well maintained it's you come up here you have a gorgeous piece of property that borders the um, pond so you're going to get a gorgeous pond lot pond view here and you want to be able to not see construction um, if this building of this magnitude goes in in this location, that would ch will change. This building is much too large for a 20-acre parcel. And um, J&R Landscaping has a lot to benefit, I understand, but I would have a lot to lose. I would, it would devalue the desirability and the value of my property if a, a warehouse of that size is, is put in here. Okay, so that's one of my concerns. I also have concerns regarding, um, well, the size of the building also takes into account that um, 10,800 square feet is, if he's going to be putting wood chippers and trailers and things like that, that's not the equipment that would be needed to run a small 20-acre nursery. It's significantly too large. So, um, I see there's a great potential for the landscape company to lease out a good portion of that, to be having deliveries from other nurseries or from wherever they purchase things from, um, nighttime deliveries, people working at all hours of the day and night. I think that um, 
you would need to have parking. You certainly are going to have people working there, and last I recall, there was no intention of having any bathrooms built on this, and originally they said no lighting, but I realize that he's kind of adjusted that um, tonight, that there would be some lighting on there. But you'd have workers and parking issues and people being there, um, heavy equipment coming in and out. So in addition to that, you now opened up another issue of road maintenance. Who's going to maintain this beautiful private driveway with all these heavy equipment coming in? That seems to be something that we would need to have very uh, clarification on before we can do, uh, make any decisions on this. Um, my understanding is that this property is called a quiet nursery, meaning that there was, there get the very lowest tax level for an ag district, a very, very low one, $75, I believe it is. And if that's the level of ag district, of ag nursery that we've got here, then that would be what would not need a warehouse at all. Is to, if this is considered, and they've got approval for a 70, for a, a quiet nursery. It appears to me that that would not require something that needed a building at all. Because it's left quiet for many years, they leave it to grow, and then individual things would come in as they're sold. So um, I wanted to bring up the site plan. I wanted to bring up the devaluation of my property. I've got a lot to lose when somebody wants to buy land and they're seeing an enormous warehouse. I wanted to bring up the size of this warehouse, <laughs> that it's too large for a 20-acre nursery and 26 feet high. I think I heard the 25-foot tall for the, some of the trees. Um, that might not be sufficient. Um, the possibility of that warehouse being rented to other co corporations and what they utilize that space for and in trying to enforce the not to allow big heavy trucks and other deliveries coming in. How do you enforce that if you're renting out the other portion? I know what a working warehouse looks like, and I wouldn't want to live near one. So I'm trying to sell my property, and I think that that is a big detriment to, to the value of my property. I wanted to address the uh, road maintenance issue, that we have a great concern for that. And I wanted to just... Um, put out there that we are not that we would like to work with JNR landscaping, but I have serious serious concerns about the size of the warehouse that he's proposing. It is extremely enormous for the pro size of the property. Okay. Okay. Anything? Any questions for me? Okay. Unless you need to respond. Um, well. Yeah, I'd like to get other comments in, too, and then. <coughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. My name is Joe Guerrero, and I own the property after hers up here. And <clears throat> I have a picture which I just lost that I want to show you. <clears throat> this is what you see now. It's one of the sets of gates that they have. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I had a conversation with the owner, one of the owners, last Saturday. And I I, and I gave him this. He agreed. We shook hands. But there's two, <coughs> set, there's two sets of gates like that. And what I would like, I agree that the building is way too large. All the equipment that the... You that, could uh, you speak at, because oh, it's gonna, the mics are going to have trouble picking it up. All the equipment that the uh, attorney had mentioned, uh, I live there. I've never seen that much equipment there. 
five this, 12 of this. It, I've never seen all that, that, that equipment. So I don't know why that large of a proper uh, building is needed since I've never seen that much equipment there. Um, and <clears throat> there are two, as you can see in that iPad, there's two large gates. Mm -hmm. And I explained. It to, got, the picture it, uh, got lost. Sorry. I'm looking at gross turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> So there's two sets. There's one here and there's one, uh, I don't know, 100 yards down. And I, I explained to John that from the posts over, I would like this covered. This way I don't see all, the, all, all of this mess with privet or whatever up against the fence on both sides. This way when I look at the gate, I see the field. <coughs> and when I see the other gate, I see the field. If you want to put your mulch, you want to put your sand, you want to put whatever I'm you want to do. I'm sorry. Well, he's, he, he wants you at the podium. He wants you by the podium. Yeah, sorry. I figured it was my mulch. No, no, we can't. No, we're, we're sorry. Audio. Yeah. So if you, want to, if you want to put sand, mulch, whatever you need, it should be behind the fence, not in front of those two gates that are opening, because when I drive past the road, I see the gate. But if you put privet from the post that's holding the gate over, Put anything you want behind it, and no one's going to see it. And I discussed that with John. Uh, I believe it was last Saturday. Um, I know he has a partner. I don't know him. I never met him. Um, but he was very amenable to all these things that I just handed out. And uh, on the other part, I will say the building is too large. I've never, I've, I'm there all the time. I've been there for, for years. That, there, I, that much equipment. Joe, read your list. Sure. Okay, this is storage for equipment for a tree farm only. A, a, a potato style barn. No vehicles to be left outside of the building overnight. The purpose of the building is to put the vehicles in the building. That's what was explained to me by, by the owner. Uh, I, my, my question is the size and number of vehicles and the number of employee cars. Trees to be covered in all fences except the gates. No objects sitting inside the gates, therefore blocking view of the fields I had just shown you in that picture. The new barn that they're building, fully covered with trees, maintain the road and trees north and, uh, north and west of the road. When building the barn, be mindful this is not a commercial road. Any debris, brush, mounds of soil, to be stored out of sight from road and the gates from my house as we pass by. On the corner, on hay ground, I have an experience with a very, uh, it's become like Sanford and Son, it's become a junkyard. On the corner of hay ground, when you come out, they have pallets, they got renters, they got everything. So that's why I don't want that and it will devalue the property. But, you know, it's a landscaping business only. No renting, only for his business. No public access, no tenants or subtenants, no toilets indoor or out, no sleeping inside, no signage, and no advertising. This is what I recommend on the site plan. Well, let me make a correction here because he's not allowed to run a landscaping business out of there. It's for a nursery. Oh, okay. I, I meant nursery. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. So if you see a landscaping business running out of there, being run out of there, contact code enforcement right away. Okay. And you'll have a whole heap of trouble. Okay. Because that's what's done on the corner. They okay. might not be operating. I don't know their permits. I understand. Can I get a clarification of one thing? This private road, is yeah. there a maintenance agreement? No. Is there... <coughs> it's just a common driveway. There's no maintenance agreement between any of the land owners. It's an easement. There's a, there is there's an, an easement, easement for the land. But sometimes there's a maintenance agreement that a, an easement might run through a property, but it, there usually or there can be a maintenance agreement amongst the landowners as who's responsible for maintaining sections of the land, who does the plowing, who does the you know, for, uh, snow removal. Okay. Or the, Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So any snowstorm, obviously, 
even though they own it for a few years, they're not working in January or December. So the guy who pays to plow that land is me to get in and out of my house. The other one, uh, Dara, her land is vacant. Is where I, she lives out of state, but her land is vacant land, so it doesn't matter. I pay for it all the time to plow in and out, to get in and out. I've been, I, I've been snowed in, and I, and I have to wait for Frank Berry or whoever it is that's going to come with the machinery to, to plow me out because a pickup truck and a, and a plow and a shovel is not getting you out. That's a long, long time. And the winds are brutal. The wind drifts alone, it's, yeah. it's incredible. Right. You're so way up there. Where are you? Yeah. Will you start at the top? House? Can you? I am up here. So you start at the top of that driveway to get out to That's the road. Correct. And at the end of that driveway is, I don't know if you know Tarnable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tarnable. But he That's comes the in the other way. He comes so, in but all they way. go out the other way. Yeah. So you do that whole. This, this is me. That's you. Okay. And the fields are here. So and it blows. the winds, the yes. snow, yes. I pay for it. Okay. I've always have. Good. I've been there for about 15 years. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, uh, print your, make, make sure you print your name on the sheet if you hadn't done so already. Additional comment? New, uh, yes, Mr. Penny. Larry Penny, <coughs> New York Road, Sag Harbor. <coughs> I did, uh, a couple of things here bother me. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, the head of the planning board uh, mentioned that it can't be a, uh, a landscaping business. It's, you know, it's, we're, we're talking about farmland here. <coughs> you can f landscape the farmland, but you can't use a vehicle, <coughs> a building to house vehicles that are going off property to do other jobs, you know. And that's what it looks like to me. <clears throat> I don't think there are any tiger salamanders to worry about, but uh, I'm worried about the Suffolk County <coughs> agreement, <clears throat> having worked in East Hampton for 28 years and having seen East Hampton after I left uh, try to build a recharge basin on a county preserve land and then have it, it stopped and then just sitting there now with piles of sand for like five years. Um, I wonder if um, if uh, this, what the county would say about uh, a building this large with all those machines obviously are not just going to work on that property. I would think they would have a problem. I'm not, I'm not sure uh, about the law because I know that there was a law, there was a state law that was being considered to allow uh, individual farms to, to build on their farm, as long as their buildings had to do with farming on that particular land. Um, maybe someone else here knows better than I do, but uh, I know that was that came up uh, this year, and uh, I know uh, I talked with uh, <coughs> the fellow who, Pine Barrens guy, who's, uh, who, who sued uh, over that one. So uh, I'm thinking that uh, this is a much too big building for uh, that parcel. Uh, I grew up in Mattituck, potato farms, fields, barns. I never saw a barn that was more than, say, 50 by 40. Uh, this barn looks like it's about 200 by 40 or 50, you know? So uh, I think it's more than a barn, and I would caution the board on uh, approving this without further information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yes, of course. Just uh, say your name again. Oh, Darry Yates. Um, my personal experience has been that many times people make agreements or go into an agreement with other people and they have all good intentions of abiding by what is verbally or even written uh, agreed upon. And then a, a year, a month, or whatever down the road, things happen and people change their mind and they do things that are. I want to know what we would be agreeing to and how these agreements would be enforced. How could it be enforced 
that they that um, JNR does not turn this into rental and sharing. I know about rental renting warehouses. You got you don't need this much space. You rent it out. There's a demand for that. I am not. Well, I want to know what kind of um, enforcement can will, would be out there from the town's point of view that's going to keep that's going to protect our property. The other comment I want to make is. Joe Guerrero has been very generous and he's taken care of the road up until now. That does not cover the damage that heavy trucks are going to use with potholes and running off the edges and damaging the tar, damaging the road. It's a private driveway. It's a beautiful, long, private driveway. It will not be like that when we have delivery trucks coming at night, which many of them do, and they are going to need lighting to deposit their goods. That's going to have to be something that it's going to need to be installed. People don't work and not be able to go to the bathroom all day. That's going to have to be installed, even though we were told that there, that's not going to be presented. There was no need for bathrooms, no need for lighting. I don't think those kind of things are reasonable. And I think, you know, there's going to be road damage, and we need to figure out how this is going to get paid and who's going to pay how much of it. And it feels to me that a industrial landscape company needs to bear the brunt of that rather than um, Mr. Guerrera and his one residence and whoever possibly um, ch chooses to build on my property. Big difference in weighing that there. Most of the ag reserves, we, the more recent ag reserves, have their own access for the very reasons you've stated. Mm -hmm. This one was created back in the early 80s. It was, and yes, by was my grandmother. By your grandmother? Yes. So we, I know. it's on our radar now, but She didn't then, anticipate this. Of course not. You of wish course she could not. have maybe given the Ag Reserve its own separate access, but she well, didn't. Well, live and learn, I guess, yeah. but that's not the we, way We have learned, up. yeah, that's. Yeah. With regards to um, uh, renting out warehouse space, we have a robust code enforcement department Mm -hmm. uh, constantly vigilant, and uh, but the na and they usually come in response. If you see other activities, non permitted activities, which will be limited by covenant by this board, if you see activities outside that covenant, and you call them, there'll be enforcement action. Well, I understand that, and I understand how the process should work. I also understand that that becomes a long term, constant battle. I am aware of another situation in the area where someone has a um, warehouse and it was an ag on ag property and they decided to rent it to a party company storing party equipment and their deliveries were coming in at night and they're dumping all they're making all kinds of noise and all kinds of lighting is necessary and they the people had to hire an attorney and fight it and kick the party company out. Then the owner brought a construction company in and started to do the same thing. And then the residents nearby had to, again, fight with them to abide by the limitations of the use of that warehouse. I would like to avoid all this constant battle by just l limiting the size of this building right to begin with. That's my goal. And not have to be back here time and time again. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Additional comments? We're going to have the applicant's representative come forward to address some of the comments and concerns. Sure. Um, <clears throat> there's been no evidence of any sort that this is anything other than a tree farm, that the ag building is going to be used for any other purpose but to store the applicant's farm equipment. We're not going to lease it, not going to run a landscape business. There's been no testimony about midnight deliveries, which I find somewhat surprising since Ms. Yates doesn't even live there, that she can make such a statement um, about these deliveries, these that have uh, apparently uh, been made, which um, as I said, I don't think there's any basis to even make a statement like that. Uh, as far as the height of the building, um, which uh, the application here that was submitted shows it's 16 at the low ridge of the uh, of the roof, and it's basically a 27-foot uh, tall building. That's what the applicant. Uh, that's what the 
the applicant the uh, application stated um, I'm gonna submit I mean this again there's no evidence of any destruction to the road that these supposed midnight deliveries have caused this is a photograph I'd like to put this into the record that's a picture of the road and, uh, and the access you can see I don't see any ruts, potholes, or any other problem. The uh, applicants have been there for a while, operating their business uh, since about 2012, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see any <coughs> damage to the road. It looks pretty good to me. Um, of course, as far as Mr. Guerrero is concerned, I mean, uh, you know, there's not going to be any landscape business, no renting, <coughs> no public access, no tenants, subtenants, no toilets, no sleeping, no signage, no advertising, you know. Yeah, uh, of course not. That's was never any uh, presumption that that was uh, uh, no uh, uh, by the applicant that that was going to be um, done as far as employees are concerned the applicant uh, basically brings employees there by two vans so essentially there's two vans and if both of the principals of J and R there that's four cars that are parked on site at any given time max so um, Again, I don't uh, see that there's a great deal of traffic either uh, as far as uh, uh, the property is concerned. And um, is he growing most of the stock or is he importing it? Well, I assume that there are seedlings when they uh, are planted, but then they get is cultivated. He, so he's growing his own nursery. He's growing. You want to see? He's growing his nursery stock. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Do you expect an increase or a movement of trucks or anything else after this barn is built? Do you expect? No, it's going to be the same business. I mean, so you're not going. To, are they? Do they have other going to locations? Be an intensification of the land use, if that's what you're. That's the question. No. Do you have no, other other locate? Let me just finish this. Okay. There are other locations from which he's going to be storing trucks or any other equipment. No. So this will be the equipment that is currently on the property, you know, right. sans your normal expansion, but there's not going to be equipment coming from another location that's going to be stored here at night or anything? Nope. And um, again, what was submitted into the record previously, I, you know, I gave you a equipment list, mm -hmm. plus I even had the applicant basically sort of measure the each one of those pieces of equipment and we added up that and it's in excess of 9,000 square feet that's part of the record and as far as our equipment list is concerned I think it's 94 9,500 square feet thereabouts and that equipment is all outside now I'm sorry that equipment is all outside now um that's a good question Can I answer no no there's not that much equipment on the property that never has been. That's the point. Uh, that's okay. exactly they can't. The the I'm sorry, you have to use the podium. That's the question I had. Yeah, that's the question. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's the $64,000 question. There's never been that much equipment on the property. You've seen a few trucks a few, uh, back and forth, but what he listed out, chippers, all this kind of thing, he must have, it, it sounded like there's 20 or 30 pieces. No way. Let's go tomorrow morning. I'll show you. I think he has some response. Uh -huh. okay, the here is okay, perhaps. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Just state your name for the record, please. I'm John Kalbacker, uh, part owner of the JNR. Um, we are leasing a piece right now where some of the equipment is stored. If you look at the uh, the list. There's big, um, some of the big ones are tree spades that we move, go and move the trees around as they mature around the, the, uh, the property. We actually just used one moving some of the stuff to screen where we said we would screen. Uh, as to big trucks coming in, when we do bring a load in, we have them park out on the road and we bring them in. We don't work at night. We're, you know, dawn to dusk. And uh, we've been there probably six years now already. 
and uh, we do, we've mowed the sides, we've done some maintenance on it. After the last storm, those trees all blocking the road, we took up all the stuff and cleaned that all up. Uh, we try to maintain and be a good neighbor the best we can. We're just trying to get our stuff covered, you know, because, you know, we wait, you know, after a, a whole winter, we come back and stuff is filled with water, it's ice. We just want to get our stuff covered so it's safe. We don't, if we have to do cold lighting, we will, but like I said, we're dawn to dusk. We just come in, we want to do our stuff, and then we're, and then we're gone. And that's about it. I mean, so you're keeping some equipment elsewhere that we're you leasing like a little to... place a little place over in East Hampton right now we have a couple of pieces there and everything and then uh, yeah we have stuff a couple of we're leasing a piece over there to grow, grow and stuff too but all our equipment to get inside that's what we need I mean if if we have to make a little uh, an adjustment to make everybody happy okay but basically that's what we need to cover our stuff and we are going to screen, like we showed you guys, we're going to screen everything. And, you know, it is an ag. It's a working ag. Uh, but we, we want to be conscious of everybody else, and we want to make it right. Um, and, and we've been in a whole time. And, you know, uh, that's about it. That's what I got. What, any questions? Just no. print, print your name. If you got a chance. Yeah, sure. They get your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I think we are, yes, mm -hmm. let me see. Sure, come on up. I've got a lot to lose in this. Now I'm gonna... oh, um, okay, so the comments that I heard were there were no deliveries at night. I know for a fact there's a warehouse nearby that does get deliveries in, um, at night. And I suspect it's just because traffic is so horrible that they schedule things differently. I don't know. But I do know that that is what happens at some of these large warehouses. Also, when we talked about the road damage, no, there's no damage on it now. The road looks fabulous. But we start doing a bigger um, operation there, you're going to have road damage. And I need to have it, I need to have a level of confidence that um, the, the things that we agree on can be enforced. Mm -hmm. And my experience has been that things, it's very challenging to have things enforced over time. People start doing things a little bit differently. Oh, they have different needs. People change their mind about how they want to operate their business. It, it, it's, it's evolved. I'm not trying to hurt Mr. Uh, JNR's business. I am not trying to do that. I'm willing to work with him. But I don't think I need to bear the brunt of, his, of expanding his company and him benefiting from it and me taking the brunt of it. I have a lot to lose in this. And that is, doesn't, and I'm appealing to you to please stand up for me and for my investment that I have in my land. I, I'll tell I, you, we I, have very limited ability to control ag reserves. We had a hearing here two weeks ago where we found out that the history of the, the uses on the reserve, a tree operation, were so noxious that the owner of the reserve actually <coughs> bought the reserve just, just to eliminate the, the operation. Trucks don't come at night. They can certainly come at night. Of course they can. And we don't have the ability to, to regulate that. There's going to be noise, there. pesticides, yes. the beep, beep, beep. Yes. And any time this municipality tries to impose sanctions or regula regulations on ag reserves, we get slapped down and slapped hard by, by the court. So I, we can't make that representation to you. Well, it's one of the ironies. I don't know. How do, what do I do to protect my, my It's family. one of the ironies that agriculture is an industrial process. You have to appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks, oh, you know, farmers till it's an industrial process. Mm -hmm. One of the iron now, normally we have light industrial zones. We establish buffers, uh, separation, and, and in light of dust. In ag reserves, you actually pay a premium to have a house lot on an ag reserve. Mm -hmm. People pay premiums to have mm -hmm. lots. The back on ag reserves, exactly, and lo yes. and behold, here comes the 15,000 square foot riding ring, yes. and, and their, their trucks at 7 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, and dust blowing into their swimming pool. It's a real nightmare. And people come screaming into town hall and say, mm -hmm. why don't you do something? I think and you know, when your grand when your grandfather had the farm, uh -huh. I mean, they had no concept that eggs and market allows horse farms, yes. that's eggs and markets, mm -hmm. tree nurseries. Mm -hmm. Ags and markets, mm -hmm. and New York Winery. State has yeah. uh, controls over it that that they are the authority. I mean, we do the best that we can, but uh, there's no doubt about it that what the farms were here many, many years ago mm -hmm. are not what they are today. No, this is They're true. They're commercial operations in a different way. Uh huh. And, you have uh, to understand, 
an ag reserve doesn't mean open space. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean to be left natural. True. It okay, I understand that. It means that. exactly what the chairman said. Mm -hmm. It's a working object, mm -hmm. and that's why he's been there. I think he said for six years already. Mm -hmm. It's working. a beautiful nursery so, where they're growing. I, mean, I it's don't think building that is too long. Do you think that putting the barn up will change what he's done in the last six years? I think it will change the value of my property. I'm concerned about the desirability and the beautification and somebody, Mr. Guerrero says he likes to look out and see something beautiful to look at and people pay a premium for that. I don't want somebody, or I'm trying to find somebody to buy my land, they're not going to look out here and want to see a 26 foot um, warehouse on there with tree, with uh, trucks coming and going and, and parking lots there. I know what a working warehouse looks like and one of that size is is obscene for it's an excess of what's needed for 20 acres of nursery we had a case mm -hmm. in which it went to the courts and everything mm -hmm. and it was finally decided by the town board and they actually mm -hmm. added space to it well <laughs> I hope you can consider we have my position. Con I mean we have control over that we can we can establish the landscape and the buffers and to tell you the truth, I think you have your, your thank you, lucky stars, that you have an operator like this who comes and makes representations and says, mm -hmm. I'm going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because the next nice. person who takes up the, over that reserve might go like this. I couldn't give a hoot. I don't, I, okay, whatever. The That's point the problem. Is, yeah. Mm -hmm. But thanks for your comments. We'll do the best we can. I'm just trying to protect the value of my land. Yeah. Appreciate that. So uh, I think we're going to. Did you want to enter something? Go ahead. We are not proposing any warehouse use. It's an agricultural barn. Duly noted. So we're going to keep the written record open for uh, 30 days. Allow you to to review the property and maybe talk to the uh, talk to the uh, the applicant. He's out there, and uh, we'll. Yeah. Close with a 30-day written comment period. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Robin. Second. Second by yeah. Jackie. All in we favor? Yeah. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Five yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Bridgehampton Commons. Do we, we have notice on that, correct? Number four. four. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jane Frith. I'm sorry. We have notice, Mr. Chairman. I'm you have Jane Frith. Uh, Robin, are you up yeah, for reading? Sure. We have notice? We do. Okay. Notice of public hearing. Please take notice that in accordance with the town code of the town of Southampton, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, November 8th, 2018 at 6 p.m. prevailing time at the Southampton Town Hall at 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, New York, to consider the pre-application entitled Jane Frith. The pre-application consists of a cluster plan with eight lots on a 1,013,047 <coughs> square foot parcel, which contains freshwater wetlands totaling 277,285 square feet, which is 6.365 acres. The applicant also submitted a yield plan, which shows eight lots with four flag lots and four road fronting lots situated in the Aquifer Protection Overlay District and the Agricultural Overland District and the CR80 Zoning District, located at 1155 Bridgehampton Sag Harbor Turnpike within the hamlet of Bridgehampton, Suffolk County Tax Map Number 900-39-1-31.5, by order of the Planning Board of the Town of Southampton, Phil Keith, Secretary. Welcome. Uh, welcome, Kieran Pate Murphy, for the applicant, which is the Jane Firth uh, Revocable Trust, and I have the uh, uh, applicant here. Um, this is at the pre-application stage. I know we we have a yield of eight lots. I'd like to. Our goal is to subdivide, but I'd like to kind of divide this up into three areas. First, we have the subdivision. We have a 23-acre parcel that has three existing houses on them. One house is really small. It's about 750 square feet. And I was noticing in the code for R80 under 330-105 that 
a one-story building should have a thousand feet square feet or one and a half two should have a 1400 square feet so this is a, a, a very small house on the property uh, maybe it's also on a small lot this is a cluster subdivision uh, maybe there needs to be a, maybe a side yard um, setback that allows it to get up to the minimum square feet is that also, on lot one? Is that on lot yes, one? Yes, that's on Can lot you? one. And also that okay. one is being proposed for affordable housing. So if it, to allow, and there's someone living there, and to allow in the future that if they wanted to expand it, that that's a possibility. The, these are concepts I want to put into the record. Um, then there are other two houses. There are three. Um, this is the cluster subdivision. So we, um, uh, you know, was talking about lots. Um, so lot. this is a cluster subdivision yes. that pre-existed before? No, it's just a one 23-acre lot that happens to have three houses on it that have pre-existing COs. So. That's lots one, two, and three. No. Yes. Yes. Now for lot, um, five, thinking about that being for affordable housing, and that's a pretty large lot, so that possibly could maybe be a two-family, and I know there's a density incentive that maybe that could be divided in half, or it could be a zero lot line and have a <coughs> two-family house. I just want to throw that out as a possibility. Obviously, we have other issues that we have to talk about. Um, but that's the thing where the idea of having a uh, house on lot one affordable and lot two affordable. The owner would live in lot three. That would be her residence that she wants to stay in. And um, yeah, lot five is a pretty, pretty big parcel. So that was, you know, think about that um, as you know, you could have a two-family, zero-lot so, line. So what is your affordable housing requirement of this eight-lot subdivision? How many How many affordable units? One. 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 So this applicant wants to give back to the community and, and create more, which I think is pretty great. <laughs> and But moving on. Now we have the second issue. We have freshwater wetlands on this property, a lot to go and we have to. We're preserving 50% open space, and the flagging was done approximately three years ago. I checked with uh, Teresa, in, uh, uh, and I checked the code. There really isn't an expiration of wetland flagging, but I understand that there's going to be a need to update it. Yes, but I'm just just saying. There's also another issue, since these are freshwater wetlands, the New York State DEC has visited this property, and they visited in July, and I talked to Kevin Jennings, who is a wildlife biologist in the Division of Fish and Wildlife, and they did not observe any tiger salamanders in any of the in ponds, but they said, you know, there could be some. This so, is so, a habitat for them. Yes. So there could be, um, there could be uh, them there. And we're, we're checking with some environmentalists to kind of look at that because we have, you know, we, we do have 50% of this preserved. And also it's in the aquifer overlay mm -hmm. and you have to, there's limited clearing. You know, in the 80,000 square foot if a lot is 60 to 90,000 square feet, you have to preserve 35%. I mean, there's this, a lot of this parcel is wooded. Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, we're looking in, into that. But I also wanted to say, I know it was brought up, um, we did, at the start of this, I have a letter here that I'd like to submit in the record from Mary Wilson that we did, um, when we were doing the yield, uh, Lot seven, mm -hmm. you know, just to find mm -hmm. out, we had submitted to the CPF to possibly buy it. Because if you look on the map, there's wetlands. Wetlands all around. Yeah. And I want to put on the record that they discussed it, but they're not, uh, they don't have sufficient interest. 
It's like buying hard to believe. Because my applicant is, you know, probably willing to sell more for preservation mm -hmm. with this subdivision. Um, she wants to live there. She wants to provide some affordable housing. And the CB I heard the CBF has a lot of money. So, you know, maybe we'll approach them again, but not to, to just get a flat out no um, back in the summer. Um, you know, I was a little bit surprised. Karen, the, the property that the town owns, they own. Yeah, uh, there seems to be two lots or quite a bit of property here. When was that? Is that purchased by CPF? Um, um, it's to it's the, to the, the well the Salinger not, not Sa the Scalinger. Oh, it's Scalinger. Scalinger sold his development rights, and he has a um, quail hunting or something yeah, on that. Pheasant pheasant, 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 pheasant hunting on that. So he's he's adjacent to it. Right. Pheasant. They and do look like birds. Property, you know, below. Yeah. There's a couple of lots. So anyhow, so that's something that we're going to look into. But again, you know, it's a cluster, so there's a yield, so we can do, you know, maybe a little adjustments. And Jacqueline did say to me and Teresa that we're probably going to have to reflag. But I wanted to talk to the DEC first, and they mm -hmm. said that they don't have a permit for subdivisions, but um, I can make a jurisdictional in inquiry. So I want to find out exactly what they're talking about. We want to, you know, we want to preserve. The owner wants to preserve the ponds and there are buffers next to that but you know we have this overall yield of eight and maybe it would be nine if we have that one which is by the road you know I mean an ideal situation would be have the houses all kind of on the road and the back mm -hmm. preserved I mean that would be you know an ideal subdivision and, so and hopefully six and seven, actually. yeah six and seven hopefully and hopefully um, you know, the CPF, maybe we'll, you know, go back to them. Um, are you planning on that? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're going to plan on that again. Six, six, seven, seven, and eight. Eight. Six, seven, and eight. Just yeah, so we're, we're going to plan on going back. But again, you know, we were establishing <coughs> density, and, and this was back in the summer. So that's that's what's going on. And um, and it's contiguous to town-owned land in the south yeah. here and here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So, I know they have an advisory committee, the CPF, but hopefully... You know that we're going to get a pre-application report and mm -hmm. you know we have things more defined right. that maybe they'll um be more open and you know we also have to go to the health department and mm -hmm. you know th everything's going to have to be upgraded probably the existing septic systems so that's going to be a benefit and there's already three existing houses there so anyhow that's that's I, I see it says there's an existing water main in the street. Is this water brought in yet? Yes, there's a town water and there's a fire hydrant right in the front. And that the existing water is to lots one, two, and three? All yes. three of those three yes. lots have town water? Yes. So it's in the APOD and it's in the Agricultural Overlay District. Any other overlays? Um, I think that yeah. covers it. <laughs> I don't think there are. Unless we have the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> we have fresh water. So. erosion has. Yeah, so that's the thing. So anyhow, that's, that's uh, okay. if you have any questions or we're open to hear from the public. So, I mean. So, certainly a piece that cries out for preservation. At I mean, least part of it for preservation. We yeah. had an entire community group right. um, about the Sag Harbor Transfer Station. I just can't believe the public is not going to put some pressure on the town board right well yes that's what i'm hoping because i realized in the beginning it's, it's well, you have a lot we of just, people here yeah tonight, we were so. we were you know we sent it in the summer we were still kind of talking talking to jacqueline about yield and just you know to get some kind of dialogue or something going right. on so like i said i was surprised okay. i mean we've so many so many of our applicants environmentally sensitive pieces stand up there and say we have no interest in selling we're not selling and you can't make us sell Right. Here you have a client that says, well, we may sell, we're trying to sell. Yeah, and also wants to provide affordable housing. And affordable yeah, housing. Have, yeah, I mean, yeah. so. Yeah, so it I could be a win-win. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your comments. We're going to okay. take public comment at this point. Okay. Yes, please use the podium. Mm -hmm. As you know, I don't live in Sag Harbor. But but, state, uh, state your name. Just oh, Pamela Harwood, I'm Thank sorry. You. Um, but I was trying to Google map the, this address, but I have to assume it's very close to the um, Long Pond Greenbelt. 
the other yes. side. The other side, side of the road. The, the other side right. of the turnpike. Exactly. So I can't imagine that there won't be a big push to try to preserve this land. And when I read about all the various ways that people want to get piece of the CPF money for things that have nothing to do, in my opinion, with preservation, I can't believe that here is a, a piece of land crying out uh, to be set aside, uh, considering it's near the Long Pond Greenbelt, it's on wetlands. Um, that's all. Thank you. Additional comments? Yes, Mr. Penny? Larry Penny, I just wanted to point out for the board's edification, and I'm sure the board probably knows this by now, but the planning department apparently didn't know. But the, the New York State DEC is the, uh, it oversees the tiger salamander mm -hmm. population. The New York State DEC uh, will probably want to get a, give this thing a, a, a good look. Uh, the water uh, from the, the groundwater from this area flows towards the uh, big fresh, and uh, uh, big long pond, and, and little long pond, and uh, crooked pond. So in a way, it's even though a road separates the area from the uh, long pond green belt, they are related to each other. And I just want to point that out for the board, and the board probably knows that. If they don't know it, they will know it. Um, so it's a uh, Kind of, I'd like to see the whole piece preserved, frankly, but I mean, I, I know that the board can't do that. Uh, at any rate, um, uh, and, and, and the planning board will find out, a, a planning department, I hope, will find out whether there is, are any or look for a tiger salamander. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Dave Skellinger, Sag Harbor. Uh, I own the land to the west and the north uh, of this parcel. Uh, uh, the lots that are back set back into the woods uh, would certainly have a detrimental effect on my business. It's, it's very close to where we hunt and where we do things. There's certain uh, businesses, certain parts of the business that I could continue to do, but if people built houses back in there, We'd be have a fight. I'd be legal, but and you know you got to fight. You got to fight. But it seems like it'd be a shame. Uh, Jane, on the other hand, her family has had this probably for a hundred years, pretty close to it. Paid taxes on it all those years. She has a right to make out of it what she can. And I, I just it seems to me that the answer to the whole thing would be to let Jane have the lots up in front and community pre preservation to take care of buying the lots in the back and it would join in with our property and it one day, uh, you know, someday it's going to go either to the town or, or just stay there vacant, but uh, they could all be connected anyway. So, so thank you. Thanks, Mrs. Thank you. Could you put your name in on the sign sheet? Yeah. It's up there. It's good may, may, I just want to give one sentence from the letter from it says the committee has determined there is not sufficient interest in this property for acquisition at this time so i would suggest those people that are interested get other organizations to write letters to mary wilson telling them that we are interested substantial numbers of people are and we think it should be preserved i think that will help if not determine that it will be bought I was going to suggest you contact the Long Pond Greenbelt Association. That's the group that's been very active about the concern about the, the impound yard. They're very active, and I'm sure they're going to want this preserved. Uh, additional public comment? We'll uh, close then with a 10-day uh, um, written comment period. Motion, motion by Blaney. Second. Second. Second by Jackie. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes, one absent. Now we're up to TJ. Ah, TJ. Now we're up to TJ. Thank you. Good seeing you. Um, do we, is, it, is that notice? Yes. Uh, it is. Okay. I'll read. I'll read the notice. 
please take notice that in accordance with the Code of the Town of Southampton, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, November 8, 2018, at 6 p.m. prevailing time, Southampton Town Hall, at 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, to consider the site plan application entitled Bridgehampton Commons slash TJ Max. Site plan applications for 17,009 square feet expansion of the eastern building for a retail store on two parcels totally approximately 30 acres improved with an existing shopping center located in the SCB zoning district at 2102 Mato Highway Bridge Hanton town of Southampton tax map 983-1-14 2022 and 23.5 by order of the Planning Board Bill Keith secretary as mentioned before we do not have an applicant uh, to make a presentation but it is legally noticed uh, once we will we will take public comment and then it'll be adjourned to a future date which will do we have that future date it, it'll be adjourned to December 13th so if you don't want to speak at this time um, come back on the 13th we're going to reopen it okay so that being said do we have anyone who wishes to enter testimony about the TJ Maxx yes please <laughs> Pamela Harwood, SSA, I'm representing the Citizens Advisory Committee, um, the Bridgehampton Citizens Advisory Committee. Bridgehampton residents are seeing their small, once rural hamlet becoming a hub of oversized commercial and residential development. The Southampton Town Planning Board has, in the last few years, seemed to favor wealthy business interests by approving a wave of town code variances despite community resistance, all given to allow ever larger structures and usage. The result is seen in the clogging of our main thoroughfare, Montauk Highway, especially between Watermill and Bridgehampton, as well as increased use of our back, our country small and very narrow back roads, especially Church and Hildreth as highway speed bypasses going through residential communities. Um, a letter to the editor, I was reading today's Southampton Press, uh, a letter to the editor said, uh, and they were talking about a different project, but nonetheless they said, this is the day of what appears to be developer-driven zoning. In the particular case of the Commons, it is not a change of zoning that's being requested, but it is developer-driven variances. Uh, the developer has asked for a variance uh, on parking. The planning board granted this. Um, as far as I know, it's land banking, which is the same thing as a variance. The place where this land banking would happen is on the other side of the shopping center. I can't imagine anyone uh, using that of those parking spaces to actually go to a new uh, TJ Maxx Marshalls. Uh, and as, as far as contiguous residents subjecting to this, well, it's a commercial uh, district. We'd be building further into the back uh, of that property, getting us closer to the point of people uh, from Sag Harbor uh, and East Hampton going through the back roads to get to TJ Maxx. I want to say also that I am not uh, anti Bridgehampton Commons. In fact, I love Bridgehampton Commons. I live five minutes away. I go there every week and I love TJ Maxx. But enough is enough. Uh, I don't believe that uh, the notion which uh, Mr. Finity, you were quoted in Newsday as saying, well, uh, it's just going to be more of the same merchandise, so it's not a new use, it's an extension. Therefore, it's not going to impact the traffic. Uh, I thought that way at first, and as a matter of fact, when a colleague and I first met uh, with re a representative of Kimco, we felt the same way, but we've long since changed our minds about that. 17,000 square feet additional space in a store is definitely going to attract more shoppers. Uh, you were also quoted in the paper as saying, you know, torn those papers, you quoted in the paper as saying, well, um, People in the community want more retail in the community. They don't want to have to drive to Riverhead. Uh, as I said, I find it a convenience myself to go to this mall, uh, living five minutes away. But 17,000 more square feet of the exact same store is not going to prevent anyone from going to Riverhead. And therefore, uh, coming from as far away as Montauk, uh, to go to Riverhead. W someone goes to Riverhead, 
to go to Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Costco, all the car dealerships, places like that. Well, we don't have those in Bridgehampton. They're still going to have to go to Riverhead. And do we want Bridgehampton to be the new center of the big box stores of the Hamptons? Um, nobody in Bridgehampton wants that. Nobody I've spoken to, I haven't heard anybody at a public hearing say that we want Bridgehampton to even increase its retail. When people in Bridgehampton talk about increased retail, they talk about Main Street and why can't we have more shops that aren't uh, mortgage companies and realtors and things like that. That's the kind of retail that they want. They don't want Home Depot. They don't want Costco and they don't want the Toyota dealership in Bridgehampton. So I still see people going to Riverhead and I certainly don't think that Bridgehampton residents uh, that I know of, anyone that I know of, uh, is going to stop going to Riverhead because we give TJ Maxx 17,000 uh, more square feet. Um, I've also heard that you approved a traffic study that said there will be no impact on the traffic, again, because it's more of an extension of an existing store. I haven't spoken to anyone that agrees with that. Everybody thinks there's going to be the possibility of more traffic, and maybe not, uh, but uh, I would err on the side of yes. Uh, we came from Bridgehampton tonight. It took a half an hour to get from Bridgehampton Main Street just to the border of Watermill. And that was because so many people were using Scuttle Hole as a bypass uh, to the highway and then had to merge at some point. Half an hour just to get to the border of Watermill, not to say getting to Town Hall here. Um, and I don't see how this benefits the community at all. I'm happy with the 33,000 square feet of TJ Maxx that we have already. And I've mentioned uh, the increase. And if you do believe uh, that there won't be more traffic, um, I don't see, I, I just don't see how you come to that opinion. I don't know who approved the traffic study, who did the traffic study. Are these all developer, is it a developer telling you that no additional customers would come, therefore no additional parking is needed? Is it the developer who's telling you that they've done a traffic study and there will be no more traffic? When our own 2004 uh, Hamlet study says the traffic was at a max already in Bridgehampton in 2004 and yet things continue to be approved that would bring in more traffic. Have you considered the fact that the property across the street, uh, that owner will be back with another application for development. Have you considered the fact that this sets a little bit of a precedent? Well, they, they were given another 17,000 square feet and we're told no additional <coughs> environmental impact, no additional traffic impact. Uh, what can we do? Um, I, I think that sends, um, a bad message, um, a good, you know, a good message to the developer, a bad message to the community. Uh, what about the pollutant, pollutants that come from all this traffic? We're very close to Meacox Pond, to uh, Kellis Pond, uh, all this runoff um, that goes into the back, uh, and there are more ponds near Martyrs. Um, Martyrs does happen to be an all organic facility as far as I know, so I can't see that they're contributing to the problem. Um, uh, the county health department, I was just sent this from Mr. Penny, um, no actually it was uh, Bob DeLuca, with regard to commercial properties, the bill provides that any business properties that propose a change of use, expansion or reconstruction will no longer be permitted to rely on grandfathered wastewater flow permits that exceed what groundwater and surface waters can support and in most instances will have to install nitrogen removing systems. Have you considered that? Um, and I think that this property was given, given variances for the get-go. Why, at, you know, how many variants do you give to the same landlord? Um, thank you very much. And uh, that is my comment. And I was also asked from some people who weren't able to be here tonight um, to read on their behalf. One is Nancy Walter Ivertes. She did, I believe, send to you directly her comment, did you all receive it? Um, you will have heard from others about the increased traffic and aggravated parking deficits. You will also have heard about the threat to adjacent water bodies and our sole source aquifer. 
but I would like to call your attention to the defining character of Bridgehampton Hamlet. Small, charming, rural, with a rich historic past and signs thereof still visible. Why are we letting developers destroy those qualities by augmenting a mall which was out of place at its inception and is totally wrong for Bridgehampton in 2018? Please look at the whole picture. Another developer is proposing a mall across the street. Why would you want two facing malls on Montauk Highway in a hamlet that is clogged by traffic and fumes four months of the year, supposedly the best months, I might add? In addition, the town's attitude is full of inconsistencies. What they are talking about declaring the hamlet an historic district. She's referring to Jay Schneiderman coming to our AC meeting and saying he wanted to make Bridgehampton, you know, create an historic district, um, and has even added an historian to the town um, pay, uh, payroll, um, and have invested a substantial sum in renovating a museum to champion its historical importance. Malls, what kind of planning is going on? How do these two fit together? Un, uh, until there has been updated an updated comprehensive plan for the hamlet, which I have personally asked the town board to do, because it's 14 years since the last one, and many developers are uh, saying that they are relying on the um, the hamlet uh, planning, uh, the hamlet plan of 2004. I think Mr. Finity, you're on record as saying about the Connor uh, Gateway uh, application that is sort of dormant at the moment, but you're on record as saying that you will be guided by the 2004 Hamlet Plan, a 14-year-old document, most of which has never been instituted. Um, until there has been an updated comprehensive plan for Bridgehampton, there should be a moratorium on any new mall development or expansion, respectively, respectfully yours, Nancy Walter Ivertes. Um, who is, uh, by the way, my predecessor and former co-chair of the CAC. Um, other people in the CAC endorsed Nancy's comments as well. Um, this is a letter that uh, I think, believe you also have, written by Andrea Spilka, who asked me to read this tonight. Dear Chairman Finnerty and Planning Board members, on behalf of the Southampton Town Civic Coalition, an umbrella organization for most of the civics civics west of the Shinnecock Canal and the residents we represent, I ask that you deny the TJ Maxx site plan expansion at the Bridgehampton Commons. We've all experienced the traffic problems along Montauk Highway from Watermill to Bridgehampton, and sadly, the expansion, if approved, would undoubtedly increase traffic in the area. To make matters worse, it's unlikely that the application to develop the Connor property across the street will reappear in the near future. It's likely. I hope I didn't say unlikely. The TJ Maxx expansion will create a real travel hardship for both residents and workers alike. And for what purpose? I question the corporation's business plan. To go to the expense of building an additional store when there are already empty storefronts in the Bridgehampton Commons complex uh, right to the left of the TJ Maxx entrance are two empty stores, um, including one right next to the door, seems foolhardy, as does their decision to expand their brick and mortar footprint at a time when so many people are changing their buying habits, resulting in the closure of many retail stores. <coughs> Lastly, will the proposed marshals be able to compete with the mega marshals recently opened in Riverhead? I didn't even know about that. So why would people stay in Bridgehampton and not drive to Riverhead as always if, if it's, there's even more there? What will the impact be on Bridgehampton Commons if it can't compete with the marshals in Riverhead? It seems that the likely end result will be additional traffic jams both on the highway and the back roads and more empty stores since existing businesses will have to face increased competition. Does this expansion really benefit the community or the residents of the Southampton town and might I add, or does it benefit the developers? On behalf of the coalition, I respectfully ask you to deny the TJ Maxx application. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Just to clarify the record, um, this board does not grant variances. Okay. It was mentioned several times during the, the speaker's you, comments. You do not grant this board I'm granted sorry, variances. I don't understand. This board does not grant variances. I thought the whole point here is that they're asking for variances no. in terms of parking. No, a land yes. banking parking is not a variance. And I believe this application was granted variances at the Zoning Board of Appeals. And we're going to find out the exact nature of it. So, oh, we were told the opposite, by the way. 
We were told um, by the ZBA that it was the planning board who granted those. Planning board do not grant variances. We don't do variances. We don't have the power to grant variances. Interesting. Ask any land use attorney. But the ZBA does. That's they what they do. do. They're the ones who told me that, that it was uh, all I, done at the planning board. No, no, there might be a difference between land that. banking. You doubt that they said that? Yeah. Yes. You might have misunderstood. They appreciate their role, which is to vary the code. Mm -hmm. Land banking is permitted pursuant to the town code. That's a permissible under certain conditions. Yeah, Adam Grossman pretty much uh, told us that they have a very strict set of guidelines, all mm -hmm. set by the state. Mm -hmm. But it was the but it's the towning board that can grant the things, the other things where they are not confined by state restrictions. I, That's what he told me, yeah. and we have that in writing. Land I, banking I, parking, just to explain, is just as the name implies. The parking is there. We don't construct it. We land bank it. We like to see less asphalt, more greenery. If you want more asphalt, this is the time to tell us, and we'll make them pave it over and install the parking. Also, this site gave up a lot of parking in favor of a very heavily vegetated buffer along the road. They have the parking there. If you want us to bulldoze those buffers and put in the parking, Tell us this is your opportunity, we, and they'll be happy to do it. Actually, I have a story to tell you no, no, about no. that. Before you do yeah. that, because yeah. this is very important, mm -hmm. and and what happens is is that boards and board members and other boards are accused and repeated. Yeah. And this one said that I would rather you just understand what I don't. I I I think it's unfair to Mr. Grossman, who's a you know a, a chair of a very important land use board and a very respected attorney in, in our community to say he said she said so let's just why don't we just clear the record as our chair That's said fine with me, but let yes. me allow oh, me sorry. please as our chair said we deal with land banking the parking okay we do not grant variances there is a code that controls our what we can do as a town as a planning board there's a code that controls the zoning board. This is we have a great computer system on our uh, our e codes, and you could go on and get an idea of who does what, so we can clarify it. But we do not grant variances. Do you grant waivers? I, it depends. Parking waivers, yes. 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 Or, yeah. This but, can issue so is it possible I'm simply um, using the wrong word it, that it, I'm it, using it, variances when the word should be waivers? Be. But it's very serious differential because it, yeah. it gives the the public and we try to stay with the facts. Yes. No, That's, as well you should. We, we try to stay with facts and we try to educate yeah. the public also, especially in public hearing, as to who does what so everybody knows who to go for for the proper relief. Mm -hmm. So I think our chair has um, summarized that well. I just want to make sure we get clarified. And, and I thank you for that. Legal, it's a legal yeah. term. It's a legal action. Yeah. <clears throat> we do not have that. We are right. not a quasi-judicial board. Right. The zoning board is. So would I be <clears throat> correct, and I'll look to you to guide me on this, would I be correct in saying you have the ability to grant waivers? Yes. But I, waivers. Uh, I'm what? not sure what you mean by the word waivers. That's yeah, and again, we clear. have to be very careful well, what you're asking. We can, we can grant certain yeah. relief. We take care of the site plans. Please jump in. Right. Yeah, waivers waivers are also the land banking that I described. Right. Yeah. In other words, that's the, it's a confusing term because people think, well, we're giving, we're eliminating the parking, we're land banking it, and they're calling it waivers. Yes. No. But if, right. if it's needed, we we can build it. Because so the idea of yeah. land banking yeah. is, and the chair will it's correct me if I say, is to keep things green. So what we're saying is, Mr. Developer, you might need to have another 20 spots. Right. But right now we're mm -hmm. not seeing that. You can bank those 20 spots, make it nice and green, put bushes there. But hold that area. You can't do anything else with that area. And please correct me if I'm wrong. You can't do anything else with that area, okay, because mm -hmm. that's banked for that purpose but right now it's pretty it's green and it's, it's nice if we then need those spots yeah. then those greens would then be pulled out and you would then pave it over right. so land banking is a way of preserving open space while protecting that if we need the parking we have the availability also, uh, is that you mentioned the traffic 
So oh, yeah. can I can I just yeah, then, answer okay. this particular issue? Um, I'm aware that the space is land backed, and no, I don't want the parking to be built if it's not necessary. I'm under the impression that at the moment the uh, area is owned by martyrs. It's not owned by Kimco. It's owned by martyrs. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, no, I wouldn't like to see um, parking spaces be built if they don't have to be built mm -hmm. on what is, by the way, not open space or green space right now. It's yes. actually parking at Martyrs, and they would simply give it to, um, my understanding is that they would well, simply it's, it's give green. it. It's right now, it's the shoulder, if you know the yeah. back entrance, the lot. It's, it's the area, exit. It's the green no, no. area it's on from the King part Cullen? of the shoulder. It's part of the Martyrs, but it's right now, it's grass. Yeah. Yeah. It's grass. So, so anyway, um, wait, wait. But, but, I, but I really do want to clarify, because you're going to get to somewhere else, that clarify variance, I'm using the wrong word, but you mm -hmm. do have the ability to grant waivers. I, I, and I don't want to use that. It yeah, doesn't yeah. mean giving the, completely saying you don't need it. We're saying you need it, but you don't have to build it. In the example of, mm -hmm. I forget the exact address, 2234. Oh, I can, I'm not going to go back over. No, no, no. This was very recent us. with the NYU. It, but it's not what's before us right now. Okay. So I, I'd like to just stay with um, this. Okay. So I'm sorry. Well, That's I just okay. want to point out to you, we had two traffic studies. We had one, and then it was suggested by a group that they would mm -hmm. like to have another traffic organization look at what the conclusion was and I think he took about a month to reevaluate it and they both come out with the same thing as it stands it doesn't have a traffic impact in fact it helped this one intersection I think it's Sandy Hollow and Montauk is that the one? yeah yes yeah, snake, snake Hollow Snake Hollow Snake, snake Hollow and yeah and that area had an F rating by the adjustment in the traffic pattern, it helped that area. No left turns were prohibited. No left turns coming out of there. They had to go around. So no it, right turns. No right no. turns. They, no had to right make turn. a, they had to make a left, no right. Yes. We, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I don't know what that, you mean if this goes through? Is that yeah, what if, you're saying? if it goes through. If yeah. this goes through. But we, we did the, traffic studies and then we had that checked to make sure. Mm hmm. But I think the community is reacting to the fact that no one can really quite understand how 17,000 more square feet of retail space will not have any traffic impact. And I also think when we were saying waivers, and variances clearly was the wrong word, when we thought of waivers, we were thinking about um, the 15,000 square foot limit on highway business. This may be a special instance because it's a mall, not a highway uh, business, and there might have been previous <coughs> waivers given, but that by asking for 10, 17,000 more square feet to... It's a variance. The, 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 the papers do say that there was an additional 2,000 square foot area <coughs> use waiver because the limit is 15,000 square feet for a I highway business. I know that's highway business. business, but this is shopping center business. Yeah, but still that's in the documents. Yeah, I don't know what variances were secured and we were going to get that on the 13th when we bring this back. And up. again, maybe it's waivers. Maybe I'm using... No, no, no there were variances. Well, the variances yeah. But they were from the, the zoning board. They were from the zoning board. They were all. Well, I'm so very glad you clarified that for us. Uh, <coughs> we, there was um, almost a year when for some technical reason uh, the C none of the CACs were getting the agendas of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Hmm. They're, they're um, on the, and they're now we are back. But they are on, on the website. Yeah, and, so and, we would have I to really like after the fact go look through all the been and which we will and I thank you for um, for clarifying mm. that and um, so we will have to look but but also, as I say, we were given a very specific set of guidelines from the ZBA uh, that were pretty much described to us as all state mandated uh, as to what their parameters yeah, are. Yeah, and that's why I respectfully yeah. uh, refer you to seriously yeah. to the code. And I wish people would take, we have a fabulous system where you can really get on. It's all written in English and you can get the minutes, you can get all the agendas. And, and when it's, it's working, great. it wasn't working. No, no, the e-portal works. It, no, Southampton Town, Southampton Town Gov is a fabulous tool mm -hmm. for everyone to use to educate yourself and, and to, to entitle it. Because more you know, the better it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what we appreciate because it, it makes for a better discourse. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Additional comment? It's mentioned before. Yes, Mr. Penning.
you don't have to print your name in, but you do have to state your name again. Larry Penny, um, <coughs> again, and uh, yeah, I want to ask a couple of questions too. Um, I know you don't give variances. I know that. I know the planning process quite well, having worked in it for 28 years and uh, so forth. Um, what I don't understand is, and, and knowing that, say, for the Atlantic Golf Course, the planning department didn't tell you that there were tiger salamanders because they didn't know on the Atlantic Golf Course, uh, it's worth my effort to kind of try to get every single detail in here. I wrote a nice long letter to the planning board about this application, about the, uh, about the possibility of, um, of uh, if you're going to build a 17,000 square foot roof, might as well put a 17,000 square foot solar array on it. Now I know you can't tell the developer he has to do that, but you can sort of, you have a little bit of freedom to kind of work with the developer, you know. That whole shopping mm -hmm. mart I figured out, if that whole mall, if it, if it was solarized, it would be enough to provide about 500 houses electricity, you know. And right now we're kind of contending with that offshore wind. Danish company wants to build 15 off of East Hampton, but then they want to build 500 more between Montauk and uh, the city and along the New Jersey coast. Um, I think that the planning board should use all of its, uh, I know it's tough too, because you don't, you don't belong to the opposition, you don't belong to the, the, the proposers, but you, uh, you do have a lot of power. And I would suggest that um, in this case, for example, we don't even know what, how that septic system works your, uh, that for the entire ball. Uh, we know that the drainage is towards Kellis Pond, and we know that we hired the, supervis uh, the same traffic engineer that you hired uh, with respect to the, uh, uh, the spa across the street. He said, oh, the traffic's terrible. Now the traffic is okay. Well, we know it's not okay. I, l I look at the uh, New York 12 uh, News, Long Island 12 News traffic report every day and keep track. And before I came here, yes, there was a big red mark, meaning the traffic was blocked up right there at the, <coughs> at the Bridgehampton. Uh, area, you know, right, right uh, near the mall. Maybe not the mall, but it, I th it looks like the mall. So I think uh, uh, I was wondering. Uh, with the question I want to ask is, who makes the uh, uh, the final secret decision uh, on on uh, something like this? This is a huge thing, and uh, who says that the secret is uh, either. Uh, uh, requires a, a DEIS or doesn't require a DEIS? Is that uh, this board, our board? Our board was this the board, agency. The planning I think we board should board. really consider then uh, having a DEIS done because the law was done a long time ago and there's a lot of things going. I happen to live in Noyak, so I come down uh, Scottle Hall Road and I come down uh, Mitchell Lane. Mitchell Lane, by the way, I count the cars wherever I go anyway, by the way. Uh, don't tell any of the police that, probably it's not allowed. <laughs> Um, the, uh, uh, I've watched the traffic grow on, you know, lived here since, uh, what, uh, 1979 uh, in Noyak, and I've watched the traffic increase on Scuttle Hole and on Meacox and on Mitchell, and uh, so I think it's almost worth pause decking this just so we can get a good handle. I'm not against Expansion, I'm not against this, this idea of 17,000 feet expansion. I'm just thinking that it's worth really looking at in detail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Penny. Additional speakers, as I mentioned before, this hearing will be reconvened on the 13th. You don't want to speak at this time?
Okay. Uh, my thunder has all been stolen, I'm afraid. And the last comment um, by Larry Penny really did it. Um, I've been very disappointed in the planning board in its uh, land banking. Uh, but as you all know, and I mentioned this in a very long note to you all, that the theater space is along here. Julie, you have to stay at the mic. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, we know it. Okay. It's, it's as far away from um, Marshall's as possibly could be. And the, the employees of Martyrs, because I went up there at 7 o'clock several mornings and counted the cars, there were 70 employees marching across the street. You, they're already using the northbound street, um, no, northbound entrance to um, the commons. And they're parking, starting at about 6.30, 7 o'clock, they're starting parking on the, in the lot. And, and it doesn't really matter to, to me or to probably anybody, because we don't use those spaces along the north road, but the marshals, so the reason Martyrs is interested is, is it's going to benefit them more than it is any, anything in the Commons. So that's, that's my, I mean, I've made that point before in a very long letter. You should have it somewhere. Um, I've also been, I'm, I'm a science teacher by training, um, and I'm really disappointed in what I call the lack of creative problem solving. Now, I know your job is to satisfy the code. And I'm, well, I'm going to make a recommendation to the town board and to the um, I guess you call it the planning department, the future planning department, that in, when you have a large development like TJ Maxx, that it be, uh, that the, both, both planning departments get together to see if we can come up with what I call some more creative solutions um, and, and get a broader view and, and possible um, alternative solutions to a problem like this because we've got not only do we have empty stores sitting right next or one right next to the other one very close to um, uh, TJ Maxx, if we could sort of rearrange those stores maybe with a, uh, obviously with the um, agreement with the one, the, the nail salon could be moved to the Radio Shack and then you'd, the, TJ Maxx would have had two stores that they could move into and, and, and avoid this expansion. But I realize this is not your purveyance. But if we had the long-range planning department, possibly we could have some more, have access to some more, uh, what I call creative planning. So that's the one thing I, I've been disappointed in in this whole process, and I've read it. Um, and by the way, you're, you're the uh, the um, engineer that you all hire, Nelson, Pope, and Voorhees. I think they're excellent. Uh, they are so thorough; they scratch every surface. And I've been in and out uh, with the town planning department to um, further understand wastewater and whatnot. So, but then Larry stole my last point. Uh, why has there been no mention of community benefits? We have community benefits with other um, uh, uh, applications like this. <coughs> and the town needs uh, renewable energy and many of the roofs of the south are south facing in the um, commons. Now I know this is not again your, under your purveyance but it might be another, if we got the town board interested and we got the, um, uh, the other, long, the, the future's long range planning department, I don't know what you call them. Um, maybe we could, uh, you know, impress upon Kimco that this would be a benefit to the community because that really would be. And Larry, thank you. So those are the comments I have to make. Um, Just give me the whole thing, I'll pass it down. Okay. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> Next speaker? Yes. Hello. <clears throat> My name is John Crindler. I live in Bridgehampton. I don't think that there will be any objection if I'm very brief. <laughs> um, what concerns me most is the traffic. Um, I live here year-round, and it gets worse every month, it seems to me. It took me 35 minutes to get here from Bridgehampton this evening. Um, I understand the benefit of having um, conveniently available, affordable retail sales. Um, I see the benefit <coughs> of that to our community, but to others who, 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 who live uh, some distance away. Um, I see the benefit of economic development in terms of 
jobs that are created. But nevertheless, it's not clear to me that having this very large additional space won't have some impact on the already horrendous traffic. And that's the most serious problem that I have. And for that reason, I'd like to associate myself with those who've spoken um, against this proposal, um, basically for the reason I just stated. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to take um, a few seconds to say something about the ever-increasing traffic nightmare that we all live with. And that is that you, if you watch this planning board or the ZBA, you see that there's a two-lot subdivision or an eight-lot subdivision or a ten-lot subdivision. And each one of those lots brings a house, brings a car, brings more traffic. And so over the years, and we've all lived here a long time, we've seen an increasing number of traffic jams. And then, of course, we have the summer season. This town, and I'm making a pitch for this again, we have no traffic engineer on staff in this town. What is the biggest single nightmare in this town? Problem? Traffic. There is no certified traffic engineered employed by this town. Tom Neely is not a traffic engineer. So I ask you to lobby for a traffic engineer that can look at the entire town wide, look at the road systems, see what needs to be changed, and come up with some creative solutions. Because now it's just a patchwork. You know, we, we just, and you have traffic consultants who work for each other, who don't, you know, they're working for a developer, then they're working <laughs> for the town. And so that doesn't bring you anything. And so, I mean, we're all frustrated about the traffic. You know, and, and getting past the commons, it, it may not be the commons. It could be the trade parade that's going home. We all have to deal with it. And what is the source? The source is, I mean, the solution, it may not be a full solution, but I think it's time to take a very long look at the traffic in the town of Southampton and get a manager, traffic engineer, to create some system that would be better than what we have. That's all I have to say. No, I, I because have, I have to agree with, with Jackie. Um, we need a holistic approach. We, each developer is required under secret to give us their best for that piece. But when you add this one to this one to this one, um, they're not looking at that. That's because they're not tasked to do that. We need that holistic approach. And uh, so we, we, among ourselves, we, we complain. So we're ec ec echoing your comments. You know, as a, not to keep anybody <laughs> much longer, but we have to have training as a planning board. We're required so many credits a year. And we did take a workshop, uh, and it was on traffic. And it was a panel of traffic engineers. And it was astounding to us uh, that uh, of the alternative ways that you can make street patterns uh, much more creative. This was news to us. So if we had a traffic engineer certified, trained in that, spe that specialty, we might begin to move the needle just a bit. There's another thing. Hmm. A lot of times you'll notice you're in a lot of traffic, and then it disappears. I was chairman of the CAC in Hampton Bays, and we had traffic engineers, and I asked them, and they said, every time you put a light up, you put 500 cars on the road. And Hampton Bays, in the last 15, 20 years, has put five lights up. You come in there, you start with the traffic around Forty Barn, and it ends at the canal because of the lights. So a lot of times what you think is a fix with a light is adding to the traffic problem. And I'm not saying it's happening to you, but there are things that you, that you demand. We demanded a light at the Shell Station near there. Now when you drive into Hampton Bays, it backs up over the bridge and down at certain times. Mm -hmm. So there, there are things that you think you solve a problem and you create it. Right. And we have three jurisdictions to deal with. Yep. The state. State Road, 27th State, County Road, Scuttlehole Road to County Road, I mean uh, t the Sag Turnpike, and the municipality, the local roads. And who sits down at the table together and talks about it? 
There isn't anyone who does that. And so that could be some kind of creative thinking. You have to have someone who can put these pieces together. It's an excellent idea. Yeah, I mean, for example, you can't do anything at the corner of the 27 going down Lumber Lane and the Sag Harbor Turnpike because you've got state, you've got county and municipal. Lumber Lane's a town road. The Turnpike is a county road and 27 is a state road. And each one says, oh, you can't do that. You can't, you can't uh, eliminate uh, or control my road. And when they so we're as frustrated as you, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> believe me. And when the state or the, the, really the county makes a decision, they don't change. We had two engineers in here, right? And we tried to talk them to a simple little thing that everybody on the board knew was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely refused to do it. We had one today. We suggested yeah, it. The curb cuts. They're not I mean, the change. county mandates that. So once they mandate it, they don't even ask for our, the opinion of the, 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 the locality, <laughs> either from the town board or us. So it's very difficult when it comes to traffic to try to control it locally when it's controlled, as Jackie says, by three different groups. Yes. Well, good comments. And uh, good we're going to bring this all. They didn't look at traffic. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't want to look at traffic. <laughs> so we're going to bring this. Uh, we're going to bring this back up on the uh, 13th, and by that time, we're going to have all the traffic problems solved. So, uh, so. To you. Uh, Everybody that, gets uh, We have a motion to adjourn till the 13th. Motion. <laughs> motion by Gloria. Second by Blaney. We'll be back on the 13th. Thank you this for your attendance. We we're going to go Larry, to. We're going to open it. We have two more hearings. We have two more hearings. We have two more hearings. We got two more hearings. We have two more hearings. No, no, we have we yes, have more two hearings. more hearings. Yes, really. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we we're, we're, still, we're still in the no, session. No, Pam, we're, we're, we're still in session. session. We're still in session. Oh. We have two more hearings. We just closed your application. Yeah. Grief. We're going to call Demena Horse Farm. Do we have notice? Yes, we do, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Gloria, now you up for reading? So we Twice. Again. Sure. Demena. We're doing number six or seven. Yeah. Number six. 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 Lorraine's going to read. I must have done so well, I could do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Too many times. You want to do a good job? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's been my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Notice of a public hearing. Please take notice that in accordance with the town code of the town of Southampton, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, November 8, 2018 at 6 p.m. prevailing time at the Southampton Town Hall at 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, New York, to consider the site plan application entitled Domina Horse Farm. Said application is for the construction of a pergola attached to the existing barn and an outdoor cooking area and patio associated with the existing horse farm located within the CR80 zoning district, situated within the agricultural overlay district and aquifer protection overlay district, located on the north side of Head of Pond Road, approximately 1,650 feet west of Deerfield Road in the hamlet of Watermill, known as Suffolk County Tax Map Number 900-101-01-9.3 by order of the Planning Board of the Town of Southampton, Philip Keith, Secretary. Great. Welcome, Lisa. Good evening. Lisa Poyer with InterScience on behalf of the applicant. I'm also here in attendance with Kevin Cannon, who's also representing the applicants. The property is 25 acres. It's a residentially zoned property. All of the development rights are intact on the property. It's not an agricultural reserve lot. So therefore, this property could be developed as a residential property or subdivided into what could be potentially 12 lots, somewhere in that neighborhood. Right now, the property is being used as a horse farm in connection with other lots that surround it. The current application is for an outdoor barbecue area and dining area, which is immediately adjacent to an existing barn on the property. I just circulated photographs of the barn the barn was constructed as per the aerials prior to 1962, but it was probably constructed prior to zoning, which was in 1957. The barn was originally used as a slaughterhouse on the farm. 
and was purchased by the, the clients and it was repaired in 2004 with building permits. Further in 2011, the barn was further converted from the barn use into the farm office use, which is associated with horse farm on the property. The current proposed application is for the outdoor barbecue and dining area, and it's to be used for the family members as their private area to go to get away from the barn activities so that they can have some separation between their use of the property as well as their employees' use of the property. They just want a separation between them and the employees. They'd like to be able to use this as dining area. It's all outdoor areas. There's a covered portion of it but it's open to the air. It's not going to be an expansion of the habitable or the interior space of the barn. The barn is not habitable. There's no bedrooms in it. There's no cooking or sleeping facilities in it. It contains an office. It contains a bathroom. And it's really used as the farm office on the property. And we're just here to answer any questions that the board may have. So where is it going to be off this It's building? going to be off that photograph, the back side of the barn. And it's kind of set up further in the photographs. That's the front of the barn. So this application is just to have a? Just to have a pergola, which is completely <coughs> open air. There's some kind of lattice work above. And then it's a covered portion that's going to be for the outdoor barbecue. There's going to be, you know, like a bar sink and that kind of a facility there. Do you have a rendering of it at all? Uh, I do. <coughs> it's a concept. <laughs> but it shows some outdoor seating. Uh, there's an outdoor fireplace just to provide some ambiance. And it's just a gathering place for the family to come and relax, enjoy the facility, enjoy the horses, but they don't want to be next to the barn with all of the horse <coughs> smells and <laughs> dust and that kind of stuff while they're trying to, you know, enjoy a private dinner. It won't be catered, it won't be rented out, it, it'll just be for their use. That's the whole application? That's the entire application. So what's the square footage on this? Uh, the portion that's going to be covered, yeah, the roof, but once again completely open, is about 500 square feet. And then the pergola area is going to be another 750 square feet. So in total, 1250, somewhere in that. 1250. Making outdoor so this is one of the applications that we're going to bring back on the 13th, but right. uh, we are going to take public comment okay. and then close it and then take more comments sure. on the 13th. Thank you, uh, Ms. Boyer. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on Demena Horse Farm? Demena Horse Farm. Okay, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn to December 13th. Motion. I'm sorry, December 8th. Did I say 13th? Yeah. No, yeah, eight. 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 So the 8th, I believe. Motion. 15th, right? No, it's the 13th. 13th. 13th is the hearing. Is the hearing the next hearing? The 13th is the hearing. No okay. Hearing. The motion okay, by uh, Gloria, and second by Jackie. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? Six yes. December. 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 Thank you. We're going to uh, final uh, uh, next. The last item is Bridgehampton Associates. Do, oh. oh, this is pre-submission. Okay. Okay. Good. I'll read the notice. <coughs> presentation on pre-submission? Yes, we yes. do. I just have to take notice into the record. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, please take notice that in accordance with the town code of the town of Southampton, a pre-submission conference will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, November 8, 2018 at 6 p.m. prevailing time at the Southampton Town Hall, 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, New York, to consider the pre-submission application entitled Bridgehampton Associates, Inc. The site plan application proposes to expand the existing pavilion with the construction of a 1,500 square foot covered terrace along the southern portion of the building, construction of a rooftop ocean view deck, and a 250 square foot expansion to the northern portion of the building for storage and staff break room, which will add to an existing 3578 square foot clubhouse facility located in the New York State Archaeologically Centre areas and 
partially within the New York State DEC Coastal Erosion Hazard Area, located 43 Mid Ocean Drive, tax map 900134, Ward 17.1, by order of the Planning Board. Phil Pete, Secretary. Good evening. Good evening, <laughs> Chairman Finnerty and members of the Board. Peter Cook, architect for the applicant. Um, this is very straightforward. The 30 year old beach pavilion at the Bridgehampton Club um, owns at the end of Ocean Road, Mid Ocean Drive. Um, is predominantly an open air structure. Um, they are seeking to expand, we are seeking to expand the southern portion of the building um, by 1,500 square feet, create a enlarged open air covered pavilion to uh, accommodate club events. Currently, the club utilizes tents and they want to get away from that activity and try and do things under a built structure. Um, in addition to that, a 250 square foot addition on the north end of the building is being proposed to um, help us expand the um, storage and staff, um, I guess what you call the staff, how, not, it's not housing, but the staff um, break areas. Um, parking is also planned or proposed to be reconfigured. A total of 83 spaces are proposed with four handicapped. The parking is currently um, much farther south on the property than we are currently proposing it. We're pulling it back north, taking it off the toe of the dune, creating more um, vegetated space at the base of the dune. No part of this structure gets any closer to the coastal erosion hazard line than currently exists. Everything is landward of the coastal erosion hazard line. Uh, total roof coverage for this project after the additions is still less than 1% of the uh, total lot, where 15% is allowed. <clears throat> As mentioned in the application that also requesting a um, rooftop, 800 square foot rooftop, ocean viewing terrace. Any what, what surface yeah, are you doing for the overflow parking area? Is that just remaining? Pervious, yeah, just gravel. Just gravel. And the proposed parking area and Would same. be the same, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all, it's a very, beachy natural. natural kind of environment right. we're looking to maintain the, the so new additions as well it's one addition off that's uh, a 10-foot extension off the back that? the building is 25 feet wide the back is being extended by 10 feet mm -hmm. same roof lines everything of the existing building right and then there's a t-bone being put on the south end to create the new um the new pavilion so it's right. it's actually two 750 square foot additions on either side of the south end of the building <coughs> And all of the same open trusses, piling and whaler construction, open decks. There's no, currently no really interior spaces. Everything is open air. There's no heated or air conditioned spaces in the building. It's a seasonal structure. Yeah. And you're clear of all the setbacks, right? You're yeah. Within. Yeah. <coughs> Is this connected to the golf club at all? Yes, it is. the uh, beach component of the, the beach Bridgehampton, component of the Bridgehampton yeah. Club on Ocean Road and Sagavon Road. Is that, is that um, entertainment area on top? That's a rooftop deck. Rooftop to deck. Uh, occupancy of less than 50, I think it is. Is that, that's on the addition, is that correct? Yes. That's on yeah. top of the addition. The structure is very set back from mm -hmm. the ocean, so the goal is to get some entertainment area for cocktails or something where you can mm -hmm. actually see the ocean. The old clubhouse used to be on the dune, which is now just a deck. Mm -hmm. The foundation of the old clubhouse still remains. It's beautiful. Did you sustain any damage from that last hurricane that we had? No? No. <laughs> the president of the club is here. If you have any questions. Nice utilizing the roof for public space because there are so many environmental constraints. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this more and more with, the, if you notice, the a lot of the contemporary houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. down, down by the water, they've all got rooftop, yeah, everything. Yeah. One place yeah. had a tennis yeah. court. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, public comment on. Um, Rich Hampton Associates. We apologize for the delay that you had to sit through, so 
but we do have to hold the written comment period open for uh, 30 days for pre-submission. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Jackie. Second. Second by Gloria. And all in favor, aye. Opposed, abstentions. Six yes, one absent. Thank you and good evening. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zuccarelli and Glorian. <laughs> 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 <laughs>